Hello, this is Jonathan Burnside, and I'll be showing off my first game for the GDF class. I use the Unity engine, and it is a top-down shooter game. I've got multiple enemy types, multiple power-ups, shields, sounds. Is Unfortunately, from here. Uh, pretty basic shooter. There's no levels, it's just random. I swear there's power ups for weapons, too. Unlucky this time. Try again. And with all three power-ups, Jake is coming easy. So that's the basic idea. Go take a look at all the code. So, there was an animated background that we could see. If I uh, zoom in on that, it's just a star field, but uh, code for it, fairly straightforward. It's just a scrolling texture. I did have to do my own wrapping. Um, without this, it started to get very um, choppy on tablets after a while. So, I just wrap the texture coordinates as I scroll them over time. Um, here's a really short script for destroying particle systems. I just attach it to all the uh, particle effects that are sort of for explosions, and they just die after the specified duration. Uh, here's my basic enemy code that all my enemies inherit off of. Uh, most of the uh, members are, are programmable from the editor through the serialized field. A um, couple different AI modes, whether he's just moving forward, if he goes into ramming speed, or actually aims at the player. Basic startup, update, checks which uh, mode he should be in, then updates the correct AI. Um, then checks if you need to fire. Notice the uh, fire function begins with command. That's for networking. We'll see that in a second. Uh, should fire is just a timer wait so, X so long and then tell us to fire. Um, here's the collision. If we collide with a player or a meteor, uh, our health will reduce and uh, eventually they'll die. If they die, we spawn a pickup. Again, it's one of these command functions, so that it, that's for networking. Um, if we run into the player, we go ahead and destroy ourselves as well, and the player loses a few points. Um, so here's the function for spawning pickups. This keyword command is so that the uh, client in a connection can uh, spawn things as well. So basic code just um, randomly chooses which pickup to spawn and then spawns it, instantiates that type, and then spawns it on the network. Um, some basic movement stuff. So when he's moving, his uh, normal AI just moves forward. His ramming AI moves forward at his ramming speed. Move forward's very simple. Um, move forward code. Uh, get direction to player. This is used for the uh, aiming to at the player AI, which we can see down here. Update steering towards. This just uh, steers towards the currently targeted player. And then the uh, determine AI state for the basic one. It only switches between ramming and normal. Um, and we have this can see function. This just tests to see if the uh, player ship is directly in front of the AI. And we'll ram him if so. So here we see that. Um, spawning the hit particles, this is just particle effect. It's not uh, over the network as both sides will spawn the same effect. 
And here's the uh, actual projectile function, getting commands so that the uh, client objects can spawn these as well. Here's the uh, chasing enemy, the one that aims at the player, and it inherits from the basic one, and all it does is change the determine AI function to test if it's in a particular angle, in, or the player's in an angle in front of the enemy, and if so, puts them into the steer towards behavior, which will aim that guy at the player. Here's the AI for the large enemies. Um, basic difference for those, other than them being scaled much bigger, they, ha they have some more hit points, and they shoot a number of projectiles um, in a sort of random orbit around them, 360 degrees. There's the enemy generator that spawns the enemies. You can see the min time and max time. These are just uh, random ra ranges for random amounts of time to wait in between spawning enemies. Um, enemy types are all the different types of enemies that can be spawned. It just randomly chooses one of them. Um, update timer it just checks, updates the timer to see if it's time to spawn an enemy. It also makes sure that the player exists before spawning an enemy. And again, this is going to be one of the things that need to happen from client to server. So it's in one of these command functions. They always have to have the, the CMD as the beginning of their names. And this just spawns uh, enemy randomly chosen. Here's the enemy projectile. Uh, it inherits from the projectile class we'll see in a second. All it's going to do is change the collision so that it'll collide with the player ship and meteors as opposed to the basic projectile that actually collides with enemy stuff. Uh, here is just a quick FPS display through together. Looked at some different options uh, online, found uh, basic stuff using this on GUI thing to just uh, display some text quickly, just to see what the frame rate was. Here's a game network manager. This inherits from uh, Unity's network manager. I did that just so I could override this on server connect function so that I could uh, see when a player connects to a host. Um, this just changes some text on a, uh, the host menu uh, when a player connects. So you can see that that happened. It's a game state class. This gets created on the first menu um, and really only stores one state, whether or not we're using tilt controls. And we want it to live on through the menus. Um, here's some host menu controls. These are just uh, callback functions for button presses that'll uh, load the particular levels. So whether the host told it to start the game and should go to the main level, or if you canceled and wanted to go back to the main menu. Uh, here's the HUD controller class. It just to display some text and the life icons for how many lives you have and what your current score is. So update score, just sets the current score text. Uh, create life icons, creates the original life icons, loading that data and, and setting up positions for them. Whereas update lives, tell it how many lives you currently have and it creates that many life icons. A life icon is an empty class. I just really needed the name for for searches. Uh, here's the main menu control, um, or excuse me, main game controller. Uh, this just starts with the main level, and we see I've uh, declared a bunch of objects to uh, link to it. So where should the player start? Uh, what what player object or type are we using? Um, where should the enemy generators be, the meteor generators, all of that um, can be set uh, in Unity. And then when this is started, it spawns all of the enemy generators, meteor generators, and puts spawns them across the network as well. Um, here's the main menu controls. These are just the callback functions for all the buttons. You know, start the main single player game, start the multiplayer game. Um, I did have an options menu, but get rid of that. Or and check if uh, tilt controls. This actually uh, called when the tilt control 
toggle is hit selected. Uh, here's the meteor class. And basic, basic stuff. How fast should it move? How many should there spawn? Um, whether or not meteors are spawned when this thing breaks apart is based on whether or not you gave it a meteor spawn prefab. So if this is null, it doesn't spawn any more meteors. So you keep making smaller and smaller meteors and just have the smallest one leave this null and it won't spawn anymore. Um, so general stuff, setting the movement speed, um, there is a randomness to that. Uh, we wanted to just destroy these after so long, they are just moving forward so they go off screen eventually. Um, and pretty much anything they collide with other than themselves, we want them to get destroyed and break apart into other meteors if that's uh, appropriate. So see it checks if there is a meteor prefab and if not just returns. If there is one, it's going to spawn a number of them in a random 360 degree range. And this is another one of these things that has to be networked, so it's in one of the command functions to spawn it across the server. Here's the meteor generator, which just spawns the meteors, um, very much like the enemy generator, min and max times that it randomizes before, between min and max number of meteors to spawn, and then an angle of dispersal. This is just a degrees, a ra basic radius around the, the forward direction that it spawns meteors in. So, updates timer. If the timer hits the threshold, we spawn some meteors. Very much like the enemy spawner, just in a uh, random range. So, uh, getting a random uh, angle right here. There's the missile class. This is the uh, third power up for weapons for the player. And they're just tracking. So it uh, tries to find the nearest enemy ship, gets the whole list of them, iterates through, tries to find the one that's nearest to it. Whichever one that is, it begins rotating towards that. And then does normal projectile update, which just moves it forward, basically. There are multiplayer menu controls. Um, so I was just, uh, this was early on figuring out how to get all the objects. So it's very, very heavy error checking here. Um, but uh, just callback functions for start host game, start a client game. Uh, the client game, of course, checks what the IP is currently set to and tries to connect to that host. Here's the uh, basic pickup, uh, you know, very basic stuff again, movement speed, lifetime, how long it lives for. Uh, we destroy it based on that lifetime right at the beginning, um, and it just moves forward basically. So uh, the player, whenever he gets shot, he's temporarily invincible for a while. This class controls uh, uh, showing an icon underneath him, so it's just for keeping track of the timer for how long that lasts, and then setting whether or not the thing should be rendered. Um, one of the other power-ups for the player was a shield, which had like three hits, so we have three different possible uh, materials that it could be using. I'm just saying three because that's how many I used. It's totally um, variable. Um, it also needs to know about the invincibility display because we handle collision, but we don't want the shield to go down if the player is currently invincible. But, uh, otherwise, if you hit a ship, an uh, enemy projectile, or a meteor, the shield takes damage before the player does. Here's the basic projectile class. And again, movement speed, lifetime, all that fun stuff. Uh, the particles to spawn, These are this projectile is for the laser beam, so it's spawning weird little laser particles when it collides with things, and playing a sound effect. Um, I'd like to know what the parent is forget why. There's probably something in here. Oh, it doesn't look like I'm using it so far. Well, here's collision. If we hit an enemy ship, oh, that's where I use it to add score to the player. But uh, we spawn some particles. We start, uh, we destroy the ship, or excuse me, the projectile, but we want to make sure if it was playing the sound effect that that had time to end before we destroy it. So that's all this start destroy function does. 
Uh, if we collide with a meteor, we don't want it to spawn those same particles. It's just playing the music effect instead. Uh, start destroy here just uh, destroys it on that time and disables the rendering and things otherwise. Here's the main player controller. This one's pretty big. Uh, we'll hit the high points, but uh, most similar stuff, uh, lives, speed, um, the HUD and camera get used for uh, for displaying stuff to the user, of course, and the camera gets used to uh, keep the player on screen. A um, few different input controls, so general how speed, how fast you move, um, how much we're scaling the input from touch. Uh, then our power-up shot types from single to triple to missile. Our bullet prefabs or missile or laser prefab and uh, missile prefab for what are we going to fire? All this stuff is uh, pretty straightforward for the most part. Um, some accelerometer stuff I was playing around with. I saw some code on Unity for filtering the accelerometer and tried that out, but it didn't really give me any uh, better results than just using the accelerometer directly. So I think these are uh, not actually being used. But uh, this bool of whether we're not using the tilt controls or not certainly is. Uh, get all my objects that I need during the wake, so the HUD, the camera. Um, we set the shield and invincibilities to, to on. We're going to need those objects at the start. Um, we do a lot of this is local player stuff. This is just a, for things we only want to happen on the uh, clients. We don't want these to happen on the uh, other character so it doesn't double up like uh, movement and shots and things. Uh, reset stats just a basically what it sounds like resetting a live score turning your shield on things like that. Um, again this calibrate accelerometer this stuff's not being used or using the accelerometer directly. Um, main update, we do want to update the shield status. I've had a lot of trouble keeping the shield um, icons the same on both the client and server, so this happens no matter what an update. But everything else only happens on the local player, so we don't do any movement and we don't do any firing if you're not the local player. That stuff all happens across the network. Um, here's our main collision, so if we collided with a pickup, check which type it is it is, score, weapon, or shield pickup, and we have different functions to handle those, so add score, um, set the new shot mode if we got a weapon, or turn on the shield, we'll see that later. Um, if we collided with something bad, so not ourselves, not a projectile, and not a pickup, then we ran into something bad. Well, first we check if we have a shield and if we, or if we're invincible. If neither of those things are true, then we're going to take damage. We're going to make ourselves invincible temporarily. Um, here's some of that, that filtering for the accelerometer I was talking about, but we'll see in a second. That's all commented out. I'm not actually using that currently. Um, basic input. So this is for like uh, keyboard stuff or a controller. I'm just using the horizontal and vertical axes for uh, movement. You can see all the input just changes these uh, vectors, these vector variables. Um, then here's the touch input, just iterating through all the touches, seeing whatever change they have, adding that to movement. So that works for touch input. Um, if we're using tilt, again we just add to the movement x and y, the accelerometer values. Um, I used X and Z so that you can kind of hold the phone or tablet upright, and then the plus 0.5 lets you tilt it just a little bit so you don't have to hold it uh, completely parallel with your body to stay still, basically. And then we just translate the player by the total amount of move, and then keep player on screen, does just what it says, checks if you've uh, moved off screen, and if so, moves you back. Uh, update firing, just check some timers. You have a timer for your basic firing and another timer for missiles. If either of those thresholds have passed, then you fire or you do a missile fire. Um, and you see these are commands so that they can be replicated from a client. So do weapon fire. It's going to call the command weapon fire projectile. This is for the main weapon that shoots all the time for the player. Um, if you also have the triple or missile, then we're going to shoot two more 
fires from like the left and right offsets. Um, and the command fire projectile, this just fires one projectile, so all three of these are just calling that. Here's command missile fire, very much the same. Well, um, the, very, the only difference is using our missile prefab, really. Um, add score, just increases our score and updates the HUD if you're the local player. Add lives does basically the same thing, but also checks if you're dead, because this can certainly be negative. If you are, destroys the player and tells the network to uh, spawn the game over screen. Um, here's our turn on shield, which just calls add shield life. And down here, you can see it just increases the current shield's health, and that updates. Uh, this is going to then update the rendering for that. Yep, so just sets what the current uh, shield graphic should be. So whether it's on or off, and then which of the three materials in this case we're using. And one last thing, start menu button. Um, so this is actually for game over screen. On the game over screen there's only one button, this one that tells you to go back to the main menu. Um, the main menu creates objects like the uh, game state and the network manager. So we wanted to destroy these before we go back there so that it doesn't create a duplicate. And uh, that's the game. Um, I definitely found uh, the, this class and assignment very enjoyable. I learned a lot while doing this. Um, Unity's an interesting engine. I was uh, particularly impressed at uh, how relatively easy it was to do some of the things, especially things like networking. Um, it's not to say it was simple, but uh, easier than rolling it myself from scratch, certainly. Um, I don't know what I'll be doing for my capstone in this time. I believe I'll be doing some learning language project. Um, possibly I might try to integrate that with Unity. Um, we already have support for using JavaScript, so I might be able to use it on the JavaScript side of Unity. Um, if, if things are, if the stars really align, I might be able to add support for C Sharp to the project and uh, use Unity in that facility instead. Uh, thanks for listening.